How much money did you collect in payouts in 2023? Uh, so tallying it up, I've collected a little over $650,000 in payouts in 2023. When did you first discover the markets? So funny story, I actually dropped out of college. I wasn't doing well after leaving high school and I didn't know what I wanted to do in college, much like I didn't know what, what I wanted to do in elementary school. Uh, so my grades were suffering. I actually came back home and my friend that I've known since kindergarten actually got me into the markets. Uh, so I went over his house. You know, I was kind of just kicking it. Didn't, you know, college drop out, just wanted to catch up with him. And when I walked through the door, obviously they had the MetaTrader 4 terminal pulled up and they were looking at, I think it was like the yen or the pound or something. And yeah, I kind of got hooked ever since. Yeah, so 2011. So 2011, so this is coming off like great financial crisis, everything like that, markets going off. What was it like trading during that time, 2011? To be honest, like I didn't know what I was doing. Like it just felt like a video game. And then maybe that's why I liked it so much was because it gave me the mental challenge and it also provided like a platform to possibly make as much money as I wanted to make. So I almost kind of treated it like a video game, which wasn't great because it was more treated like a hobby so than, than a business. Uh, and it wasn't until years later that I realized it was more of a numbers game and a probabilities game. Um, but yeah, trading during that time was extremely difficult. There wasn't as much education online in the form of video content. So finding mentors was extremely difficult. It was all like forum based, text based and, and static images. So usually by the time I saw a specific trade setup that somebody on the forum shared, it was already too late for me to get in the market. And I would essentially try and chase that idea. And it, yeah, it didn't, it didn't pan out for me that well. So at this point, it's 2011, 2012 you're trading with your own capital this point, correct? Yes, correct. And uh, prop firms, you know, the prop space as we know it today wasn't around until, you know, I think 2016 when FTMO, maybe a little earlier when they came around. And prior to 2019, 2020, I had no idea that some of these online props existed. So when I came back home and met my friend who got me into the markets it actually sparked my interest again to go back to school so i went back to school to study business administration and finance uh, graduated from a low tier school they didn't really have a great network so when i got into the workforce i didn't have an opportunity to get into some of these real prop firms brick and mortar prop firms so essentially what i did was you know found any internship that i could it was in construction and that kind of got me in, on my journey in the construction field rather than the finance field. So during this time of going through school and, you know, eventually getting this construction job, were you trading through this time and how much capital were you trading? Yeah. So when I was working full time, it was pretty hard for me to save money and deposit into a personal account uh, because I didn't have, you know, a great start in my career, I would say. Uh, I kind of started out as like more of an accountant. So I was only making like $40,000, $45,000 a year, which made it very difficult to save on top of, you know, cost of living, whatever the case was. So saving up a 5K account took me quite a while. And I went through that process probably for five or six years where I would save up 5K, lose one to $2,000, uh, need the rest of the $3,000, so I would withdraw it. And it was a vicious cycle for years, essentially. What did your first blow up look like walking through that? So <clears throat> funny story, the first blow up actually wasn't my account. It was my friend's account. So the Fukushima power plant uh, event had occurred. So you guys can look it up. A power plant expo exploded in Japan, which kind of sent the, the yen reeling and we blew up his $400 account in like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, funny story, wasn't my, <laughs> wasn't my account. We lost all of his money though. So you had the $400 account you blew up. You were obviously trading with your own money as well. What was the path of profitability like? And just walk me through that in the most you know general sense. So the first five or six years of studying, I would say was extremely difficult for me because I would have a little bit of success, go through a, a string of losses and then system hop. So on Forex Factor, you guys can take a look. There's the trading systems forum. And in that forum, there was systems upon systems, literally hundreds of pages of trading systems. So whenever I went through a rough patch, I would try and find a new system and find the holy grail essentially uh, to, to trading. But I found that year over year, I wasn't producing any results. And then funny story, I actually ran to the same friend that got me into trading years later. This was five or six years later. He still lived in the same area. He had ran into somebody at the local bar that found Inner Circle Trader. And the way he found him was he uh, browser searched on Google, what is central bank manipulation? And ICT's content came up and 
He studied ICT for quite a while. I think he had found some success and, and met some really great traders that were trading ICT. And he told me to drop everything that I had learned previously and dive head deep into ICT. And then the first couple content pieces that I had watched of his, everything kind of just made sense. And it, it sounded like he actually had a vast experience in the markets. So it was a very difficult time for me to drop everything that I had learned previously because I had picked up all these bad habits, all these retail concepts, and then dove fully into ICT. So I joined his private mentorship in 2018. Uh, it took me another couple of years studying all of that content and essentially build a an edge over a long period of time. Okay, so this what what years is that you discovered? 2017. So this is like five or six years in the making here, like kind of playing around with markets, messing around. Most people would have given up at this point and be like, oh my god, screw this, like five years, like I'm done. What motivated you to keep going at that point? I think part of it was my distaste for the, the job that I was currently in. While it was somewhat satisfying, the fact that I had to answer to somebody and show up during specific hours, um, and there's a ceiling that I was hitting. Obviously, I wanted more and more responsibilities that I wasn't getting. I wanted to make more money. Uh, so when I wasn't getting that from my regular job, I always saw trading as the way out. With trading, there's unlimited income ceilings. There's unlimited time freedom, and you can basically create the life that you want. So the light at the end of the tunnel with trading kept me going. So what year was it that you decided you're leaving your job and pursuing this full time? Yeah, so my father actually passed away in 2020. And right after he passed away, um, I had gotten a six figure career. And when I had told him that it was almost like a burden off my shoulders, because I was always looked down upon as kind of the black sheep of the family. So once I had proven to him that I could, I guess, have a normal job and, and live up to the expectations uh, a typical Asian family would expect from a son, uh, I kind of put everything on the back burner as far as career and took the, do took the dive into trading full time and gave myself a runway of three, six, 12 months. If it didn't work out, I could always go back to work with the skill set that I had built. So those first few months after going full time and making that deep of faith, so to speak, what did that feel like? I would say it's very liberating to be able to create your own schedule, to chase something, I guess, meaningful and to produce an income that you're entirely in control of is extremely liberating. And you're basically buying back your freedom. So going from somebody that felt like a corporate slave to ultimate freedom is a feeling that I wish more people could experience and is a reason why some of us traders work so hard uh, towards these goals because nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody can tell me how to dress. Nobody can tell me how much I'm gonna make this specific year. And yeah, trading has been everything that I hoped it would be. So when you were trying to juggle the full-time job, going back here for a second, and what did the day in the life look like when you were trying to trade while working this you know, time intensive job? So the day in the life, I think when it first started out, I didn't really have structure. I like I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do on that specific day. So whether that's, you know, game, workout, go out to lunch, kind of just kick it with friends if they had a specific day off. So not having a routine actually hurt my performance. And it wasn't until I hit a specific drawdown period after I went full time that I kind of realized I have to treat this more like a business and not like a golden ticket. So in order to get out of that drawdown period, I had to go back to what I had previously known at my job was organization, you know, showing up on time, being prepared, having goals in mind. Uh, and I, tr I treated it like a business. Now I'm able to have that freedom and not have to be so rigid, I guess, when it comes to a business standpoint. I can kind of have the freedom and flexibility to set my schedule how I want, but I still have to get these necessary tasks done throughout the day. So did you, like, in, in that time period, especially the beginning, how often would you have those doubts come into your mind that this isn't going to work, I'm going to have to go back to the job? How frequently did that come up? So this is a very interesting question because even people that I talk to now that are full-time traders, we still have these doubts. We still think that, you know, on a losing streak, is this going to continue working for me? And past results is not predictive of future results. So thinking, always thinking about the downsides of your particular trading strategy and your particular trading business is very important because 
There's nothing that says I can come to the market tomorrow and make money. So you're in your full time career now. You're just what about 2020? Around yeah, the time? So it's around 2020, 2021. At what point did you really hit your stride where you're like, wow, this is actually working? What was that moment for you? Was there a particular trade or series of trades? So I would say my first big payout, I didn't have that consistency yet. And, but I think it was a good starting point to me understanding that I could actually make money in these markets. And then taking that confidence and starting to slowly build on it where I wasn't trying to hit the home runs anymore. I wanted to go full time and I wanted consistency, but I wasn't seeing it yet. So there was a couple key points that I had to hit upon before I was able to take the jump full time. And that was lowering my risk or sticking to my risk management strategy, regardless of whatever the performance was and implementing that day in, day out. What do you remember? Do you remember that uh, first hundred thousand dollar trade and like what the not only, you know, what it was like, not only like how it happened, but also what did you feel that day more importantly? So interestingly enough, the 100K trade happened on the last day of the trading year, and we can dive into that a little bit more. But really, it was a culmination of all those years of hard work, right? It felt like a 10 year overnight success story, and it kind of was. But when I think about the trade itself, it was a trade that I've done hundreds of if not thousands of times. So when I'm in the seat and I'm clicking buttons and I'm managing the trade, it's the same trade that I've taken hundreds of times. It's just the numbers are a little bit bigger. So yes, it can be intimidating, but at the end of the day, I didn't do anything special. I might, might've might gotten dinner, had a cigar, and the next day, you know, back to work. So Umar Ashraf, he said this in a podcast once, and he said, you know, people always say, oh, you know, you made however much, you made 100K in 30 minutes, but, you know, actually, it took off 10 years to make that 100k it sounds like you kind of feel the same way about that yeah absolutely and i think there's a difference between luck and skill in this game and mine i would say is a culmination of skill do you think you would have made the job quit your job full time had your parents still been there i don't think i would have i think there's pressure from people's parents to to stay inside of a traditional job and kind of climb the corporate ladder um, because it's more I would say from the outside in, it looks better, right? I can say I'm a manager or CEO of this specific company. But when you tell somebody that you're a trader, it's almost like they look down upon it as if you're a professional gambler. What's that been like with family and friends? You know, even as you've progressed in your career, you're one of the most respected traders in the space. You know, you've helped students do this as well. How has it been to try to overcome that, you know, stigma around traders? I think the biggest thing is that people should really understand that traders are just like anybody else. Uh, it's not about the flashy lifestyle, the materialistic things. At the end of the day, the best traders are very humble because we get kicked in the teeth by the markets every single day. So when it comes to trying to overcome some of these obstacles, it's really about you understanding what your goals are and what you want out of life. And in my opinion, trading the markets provides you financial freedom. And that's kind of what everybody is chasing after. So having that as your end goal and your why is much more important than having the Lambo or the big house, whatever the case is. And that number on financial freedom is different for everybody, right? So after collecting, you said over a million in payouts? Yep, 1.2. Do you feel like you've made it yet? No, and I get asked this a lot on different pods. Like, do you feel like you've actually hit the pinnacle? In my opinion, um, when I look at other greats, they always have somebody else that they look up to. So whether that's Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, they always had somebody that they're looking up to and they're always striving to become better. So when you're trying to become 1% better each and every day, uh, I try not to celebrate the highs too much and try not to get too down about the lows. Who did you look up to as you were coming up in the space? And who would you say people that you look up to or even just respect are now? And how, yeah, how's that evolved over time? So there's a couple people that I look up to and just off the top of my head, I would say ICT himself. Uh, Trader Dante is a big one and a lot of the traders that have either appeared on the chat with traders podcast or the market wizard series books um, when I was in my full-time job I was basically listening to the chat with traders podcast like every single day while I was at work so you know people like the likes of Sang Lucci I think Mike Shapiro John Ramble Moulton there's a ton of people that I, I look up to in the space that are trading different markets you know it doesn't have to do with the specific market they're trading but they all lent their wisdom to retail traders like us. If you could give a list of three 
trading or like, you know, stock market theme movies that are your favorite? What are your top three? This is a good question. I would say The Big Short is one of them. Dumb Money was a really good one. So Dumb Money actually portrayed a whole bunch of different characters, whether it was the hedge fund guy, the retail investor, or just the local professional that worked at a bank. It kind of painted the picture for all of them. It showed you that it doesn't matter what level you're at, you could blow up your account, you could possibly hit it big. Just because somebody's working at a hedge fund or a professional investor, it doesn't mean that they can't lose their shirt as well. And then my third would probably have to be Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, it probably had nothing to do with trading, but um, just the fact that there's so much degeneracy going on, I think it resonates with a lot of tra traders. Again, this is gonna sound like something they asked you in high school, but married now, you have things going for you. You've done very well for yourself in trading. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Yeah, I think if I had to look back on myself five years from now, I think I would be more known for helping somebody else out with their trading journey rather than myself. Like if I take five years from now and I'm only trading and I'm not helping the community out, or teaching students on how to trade or just sharing my journey in general, I think I'd be extremely disappointed in myself. Let's say if I hit it multi-million dollars, but didn't share any of that wisdom with somebody else. It's like I almost didn't leave my footprint on the industry. If you could think of one trait or one word, one adjective that was instrumental in you succeeding with trading, what would that word be? I would say persistence. Why? Why persistence of everything? Because as traders, you're going to fail a whole lot. And it's about picking yourself up and continuing the journey. What would you say to 18 year old Kyle? I would say try and find out what you want to do earlier in life and stick to a plan and a routine and a process and to try and hit those goals. Do you regret not starting sooner? Because I know a lot of traders that look back with remorse. Oh, I could be here. I could be here. Do you compare yourself to where you think you should be? No, usually I don't. I think a lot of people get their starts later in life. There's plenty of people, I, you know, I can name off the top of my head, but I think everybody's operating on a different timeline. So I think nowadays people are more pressured to operate on a faster timeline, which is unfortunate because I think a lot of people skip over the necessary steps and the, the struggles that some of us have gone through over the years to try and get to the level that we're at. So try not to rush the process and let things pan out how they should naturally. For anyone that you know sees this, what would you say to them coming out of a really bad blow up or just point in life where they feel like they have nothing left to give? I think you should probably take a step back and redetermine, you know, is this blow up something that's more of a mental challenge or is it actually a physical challenge? Like everybody goes through mental challenges in life, I think. No matter what you're going through, I think there's a way that you can find a way to pick yourself up and kind of get back to it and, you know, get back on the horse and start riding again.